Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Kleena here. Today I'm going to take you through the solution to this short question from the Leaving Cert paper and this question is based on functions and it's worth 30 marks. So in question A we're told that the graph of the function g is shown on the coordinate diagram below for minus 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. We're asked in part one to estimate the value of g 1.5. So that means that x is equal to 1.5 because the graph is g of x. So when it's g of 1.5, that means that x is equal to 1.5. So let's have a look at when x is 1.5. So when x is 1.5, here's 1.5, where does it hit the graph? So you can take your ruler here and draw a line or a dotted line up to where it hits the graph. And then again, with your ruler, go right across until it hits the y-axis, and that is 2. So the answer for this is 2. Now we're asked to estimate the value of x, for which g of x is equal to minus 6. So the y-value is minus 6. What is the x-value? Let's have a look at minus 6. Here we go. So where is that going to hit our graph? Let's go right across again, if you want to use a ruler. So it hits it right here and then we go straight up so this here would be minus 2.5 so I'm going to say that that is minus 2.8 so that's the value of x for when the graph is equal to minus 6 and the third part of this question asks us to, to tick one box to show how many real roots the function g of x has in this domain to give a reason for your answer so real roots are how many times it hits the x-axis and we can see here it only hits the x-axis once so there's one real root and the reason is because it only hits the x-axis once. So for the first three questions here for getting the correct answers you're going to get a total of 10 marks out of the 30. Now in question A part 4 we're asked from the graph to estimate the coordinates of the local maximum point and the local minimum point of gx. So let's have a look at the graph. So the local maximum point in this domain is the, basically the highest curved point and the same for the local minimum, the lowest curved point. So the highest curved point is going to be here. So this is the highest curve and the top of that probably here. So what are the coordinates of that? The x value is, so if this is minus 1.5, I would say this is minus 1.6 and then it is minus 1. So the maximum value is minus 1.6 minus 1. And I'm going to fill this in here. Now let's find the local minimum point. So that's the lowest curve point. So that is here. So I'm just going to take away my mark in there so I can see it better. So what's the x value? I would say that the lowest point here is probably there. So if this here is 0 0.5 and that's about halfway through there. So I would say 0 0.25 and then maybe minus 3.1 so it's just after minus 3 so that pink point here is 0 0.25 minus 3.1 and for correctly estimating this minimum point and the local maximum point you're going to get a total of five marks now in question b we're dealing with a little bit of calculus but still dealing with functions we're told that a different function h of x has the following equation so it's h of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 8 and part 1 asks us to find the derivative of h of x. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to write down h of x for myself. So just directly copying x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 8. I'm just going to fix my x here and this one in here. Now h dash of x, the derivative of h of x, x cubed. So we bring down the power 3x and then reduce the power by one. Again, bring down the power, multiply it by the coefficient. So it's two by two, which is four. X, and then reduce the power by one. So it's the power of one. So we just leave it. Power here is just one. So we bring that down here. We're left with minus one. We reduce the power by one. So it's X to the power of zero, which is just one. So our answer here is minus one. Minus eight is a constant. So the derivative of that is zero. So the derivative of H of X is three X squared, plus 4x minus 1 and for getting this correct you're going to get a total of 10 marks. Now the second part of question b asks us to find the equation of the tangent hx at the point 2 6. So 
what we're going to do is we are going to let h dash x, so the derivative of h of x equals zero to find the slope at the point two, six. So we're gonna find the slope of the line at the point two, six, okay, or the slope of the curve. So then we can use that to find the equation of the tangent. So that's easier said than done. So I'm just gonna go through it step by step. So I'm gonna take h dash x, which we just found, derivative of h of x, and I'm gonna fill in two, six, to find the slope of the tangent at this point. So h of two is equal to three, two squared plus four, two minus one. So that's three by four, because it's two squared, plus four by two, which is eight, minus one. So that's equal to 12 plus eight, which is 20, minus one, which is 19. So that is the slope of the tangent. So now we're just dealing with the tangent like it's a normal line and we're going to use the equation of a line which you can find in your log tables but a lot of you might remember to be y minus y1 is equal to m x take x1. So 2 is x1, 6 is y1 because it's the tangent at that point. We know our m is 19, let's fill this in. So y minus 6 is equal to 19 x minus 2. And you can multiply it out, y minus 6 is equal to 19x minus 2 times 19, which is going to be minus 38. So I'm going to leave my 19x on this side, bring over my y, so minus y, and then we have minus 38 plus 6, okay, because this changes sign. So we're going to be left with minus 32 is equal to 0. And that is the equation of the tangent to hx at the point 2, 6. And for getting this answer correct, you're going to get a total of five marks. Okay, everyone, so that's all for this video. I hope you found this helpful and that it might have cleared up anything that you were struggling with. Thank you all very much for watching and for listening. I'll see you in the next video.